Okay, here we are in module 213-213, audio video controls. Now, we talked about passing the controls. Now let's look at this, this bar up here at the top would be the same for everyone. So the first one we want to look at is our settings. Say I want to start broadcasting my audio and video. Well, that clicks right there. And you can see me. Now I'm going to stop that and we're going to go into audio only. I can stop it or start it. And I can click on device settings to check. Now this was covered in the basic level, but sometimes you have to go into screen sharing to show people how to do that. We can also control these directly by the button. And I'm going to mute it because it just messes up this recording. Uh, this is my name. It shows that I, what controls I have. I don't think I can stop my own writing control. No. And then finally, remember we looked at what other people's um, bandwidth was? Well, here's ours. And remember, it's just that last number. That's the only thing that works in this latency. Um, it just so happens that 1,000 milliseconds equals one second. And that's how much delay time, or it used to be called a ping time, for being able to access, uh, for, the, for your voice to hit the server and come back to people. So if that gets very long, it just drives you crazy. Most new people that um, teach on WizIQ are very confused about that because a student takes a while to answer. But and then they get in a rush. Well, can't you hear me? Will you answer me? And the student is getting confused because your voice is coming to them late. That's why it's so important. It's great if the student knows, but usually the student isn't that sophisticated. So first of all, you have to know what your own latency is, and you need to know what a, the um, attendees latency is. So both of these look good and obviously I'm talking from my own computer so hopefully it would work well. But those two numbers are the one of the important things to always know when you're starting to have trouble and um, you can't figure out why people are, aren't answering correctly and things like that. Um, the only other thing to bring to your attention is when I want to show a student how things work and help them through that that's where you'll want to become good at using screen sharing because then they'll be able to see what you're doing and you can explain to them how to use this button to find um, their um, device settings, to check their device settings. Once again, the most important thing is to train them to check before they come into class. When you um, click on join a class or attend a class, you just have to get them used to that. Let's look at that quickly. Right below launch class, system and device check. Right there is when they can check it. After they launch a class, if they come early, they get another opportunity. So those are very important things for them to uh, get used to using. And I think that's it for this line. Yep, uh, remember one more time. You're going to do it sooner or later. This button is to end the class. That stops everything. It is so darn close to the browser close and refresh. Now that's just on yours only. It's not on theirs. They don't have that on theirs. But, um, oh look, they got that raise hand thing. Like I say, I don't like that. Uh, some people like to have a very controlled classroom. But let's see what happens. And you'll see why it's tough to, why I don't like to use it. Because the only way, the only message you get It didn't show up. Well, we might look at it later, but it's a very small thing down here in the very bottom that tells you that someone raised their hand. And normally, I'm focused on the main presentation area. It's very hard to follow what's going on in the chat box and this um, stuff going on in the edges. So that's where you need a, a class assistant when you get a bigger group. All right, that's it for that line. What did I call that? Audio video controls. Bye-bye.